Today's episode of Glenn's Retro Show is brought to you by DNA Dimension Designs, the best custom retro gaming decals in the game, period. Glenn's Retro Show is also brought to you by Arcade Graphics. Looking to spruce up your arcade one-up home arcade machine with a fantastic look? Be sure to look at ArcadeGraphics.com today. Thank you for joining me on this edition of Glenn's Retro Show. Today, just a quick little video of something I've been working on right here. I picked up another 12-in-1 uh, unit right here, but this one uh, I decided I was going to modify. This one was not going to be left alone. I already have a 12-in-1 right now, and I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I actually have it right back here with my new spinner. But this guy right here, I decided to gut it and make some changes to it. So let's have a look. Okay, let me give you a quick rundown of what I've done here. Uh, like I said earlier, this is not the Arcade 1UP's original screen. Uh, basically, I had an old 17-inch, uh, I think it was an LG screen, as a matter of fact. And when I took it out of the case, the plastic casing, the screen itself was 17-inch, and it was actually perfect fit to go inside here. So I mounted that screen here as well, so it's a direct VGA connection. Uh, right now, it's running a PC version of MAME. I'm not sure if I'm going to go with a PC or Raspberry Pi just yet. But you can see my friend had given me his old Pac-Man control board. He made it a new machine, so he didn't need this anymore, so he gave it to me. And so basically what I did was I changed the on-off button to now be an escape key. So when you flip this left and right, it's basically hitting the escape, and it'll take you out of the game. The volume switch right now is in the middle position. When you move it to the left position, that's inserting a credit. When you put it to the right position, that's pressing the start button on your game. We have a four-way directional joystick from Pac-Man, which works great for these games. And I've set up both these buttons here to be action buttons. That's your primary button, that's your secondary button. And I'll show you real quick right here, right now. If I want to move this over to the left, you can see I got a credit. I got another credit. Now, if I go over to the other direction, let's play one start. Starts up the game. And if you want to exit the game, just press that over there. There we go. So again, it's just a work in progress right now. Okay, so, so here we have the 12-in-1 uh, all assembled. And actually, I do kind of wish that Arcade 1UP would offer selling just these, basically the shells. No electronics, no screen or anything. Just so the modded community could get these. And this, they're making some pretty neat things out there. And um, it's just a dream. But maybe Arcade 1UP will offer basically just the woodwork and the plexiglass as an option to sell for modders. Uh, leave some comments down below on your thoughts on that. So you can see here, uh, there's nothing in it aside from the wood itself and the plexiglass of the unit. And just take care working with this. Plexiglass is very easily scratched. You can see I left the, the protective covering on it for right now. And uh, But it's going to serve my purposes here. Uh, I did have an old 17-inch uh, monitor. Uh, I think it was an HP monitor, as a matter of fact. And it's the exact same dimensions of this opening. So... I know a lot of people are going with bigger screens, like 20 inches, but you're so close to the uh, the monitor, I really didn't see a need to going any larger. I'm totally fine with the 17 inches that they offered and that I'm going to put in here. So you can see I took the monitor out of its uh, plastic uh, shell, because we don't need that, and even with all this uh, aluminum around it, it's still a perfect fit for the opening. It's actually kind of funny that it fits so perfectly, but the, uh, the casing here adds a lot of weight. And it's a lot of weight I didn't want to have uh, sitting uh, on the unit. So I'm actually going to take the all this shell 
off of here and just leave the electronics and the actual LCD panel inside. So just again another test fitting. I was actually holding this up. The machine was on its side. So I was actually holding this in to make sure it did fit. And it did fit in all the spots here. So you can see uh, I've taken the uh, the case off and you have just a panel here. Now the RK one ups has this uh, with a black tape on it. I felt that wasn't necessary because this is actually outside the field of view. I was going to put some electrical tape on it, but it really wasn't necessary. But that's the panel itself. And then the control board here for brightness and power and so forth is down here. So again, here is the unit in the actual casing still. Now this particular monitor, the power supply was built in. You had a three prong right here. And then your VGA connections over here. Some monitors may have an external power supply, so this will probably be even lighter. But uh, again, it didn't really uh, hamper me too much. I just had to take this, this cover off. And it starts with this area right here. I had to pop this up and slide this off. And you can see the two connectors here for the, uh, the backlight. So we had to make sure you were very careful. You had to undo these two little clips. And then the rest of this will pretty much come off fairly easily. So you can see once those clips are off, which are now down here, they go to the power of the, uh, the actual panel. Um, the rest of the stuff's in here, which includes the, the VGA uh, logic board and your power supply. So again, when working with this type of stuff, always make sure you, you uh, touch something metal beforehand. You don't want to have any static electricity frying a board in here. And again, I, should, uh, I shouldn't have to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. If you do attempt this, uh, anything you do is at your own risk. I can't be held responsible uh, for anything that could happen to your machine or your monitor. But you can see right here, the panel has one flex cable going to the VGA board, and then it feeds power from this board and this little control board down here. So you have to be very careful opening this up. You don't want to pull these. This was actually had adhesive down here holding it down. Just have to be very, very careful in working with this type of stuff. So you can see that all has been removed. And you can see it's now a lot less uh, cumbersome, if you will, and definitely lighter. That aluminum did add quite a bit of weight. So now that this is off here, you have to be very careful because these were held off of this here. Um, any type of contact with these boards to anything on here will fry it instantly. So what I decided to do, I was going to put um, some double-sided uh, foam tape. And actually, I made it three layers thick just to make sure there was plenty of gap between the PCPs and uh, the main board here. But just for testing purposes, uh, see I did fire it up right here. I did put some paper and plastic behind you to see the next screenshot. But once you disassemble this thing, you want to make sure it's still working before you go any further. Make sure it didn't fry anything in the process. So you can see right here, uh, a little cheap, but again, I always try and reuse whatever I have at hand versus having to buy something new. It's a retro show. Try to use old stuff before I have to go buy anything new. So I just use some paper and even a Home Depot receipt <laughs> and a plastic bag just to make sure when I fired these things up, they didn't short out on the monitor here. It's not the best way to do it, but I've do, do it, done it for so many years. Uh, it was fine for me just to make sure that the monitor was working. And actually, you can see right here, you can see the backlight. So the machine was on at this point. It was operational. You can see it here as well that the backlight is going. So I just knew everything was working okay. And just a side shot, you can see how much thinner uh, this is when you take off that big case. And again, just make sure none of the PCBs are touching and shorting out. So this is really just for my information here. Uh, it was actually an HP monitor, but they used an LG display, which is totally fine. It doesn't really matter as long as the display fits and has the proper uh, ports you need. I was fine with VGA, whether I use a Raspberry Pi or a PC. Of course, if I use a Raspberry Pi, I'll have to use an interface board to convert uh, the display to VGA. So most likely I'll use an older PC for this particular modification. So you can see right here, um, I laid the uh, display in here and I put a couple of washers that I had lying around just to make sure it was centered. And this board is actually on three layers of uh, double-sided foam tape. Same with this right here. So there's no way that these boards would, have, would be touching. Of course I verified before I turned anything on that the pins were substantially far away from the, the aluminum or the tin of the back of the display, and it was. And next thing I did, there were four little, I guess, uh, points here that were on the aluminum case that were higher. So I decided I was going to use that, uh, these washers here, to put the pressure on the screen to make sure it stayed in place. And I simply was going to use a couple little screws and make sure the screws are obviously shorter than the thickness of your board, so you don't screw it through the board itself. And just verifying, see this little plastic knob here, here, here. 
here. And I had to do that because you can see the display now is a little bit thinner than the wood. So you'd have to put something in here to make sure it didn't flop around. And I simply decided to put the four on these secure points right there. And you can see that the boards here have a shadow underneath it. You can see the foam tape here. It's actually three layers of foam tape. Just making sure they didn't go anywhere. And of course the power supply is no problem. It doesn't interfere with anything here. Same with the VGA cable on this side over here. Now, if I want to change this out, I mean, honestly, I have the, the model of this, this board. I could always go on eBay or Amazon and get another driver board that supports HDMI, VGA, and so forth. But again, I'm totally fine with VGA uh, output on this screen. So you can see, that's it. I just took four little screws, screwed in those washers, and my new display is sitting in here perfectly. I mean, it's, it's like a match made in heaven that this display, which is probably a good 10 years old, uh, is working fine in, in this, uh, well, retro machine. So I guess it's actually fitting. And again, it's just putting everything back in place now. You can see the monitor is in here. And just putting the machine back together. And just making sure, again, when you put it in, you're make sure everything's nice and tight and nothing's flopping around. And that seems to be the case here. And here it is. I have a, I took another picture with a little more light in here, but you get the basic idea. There we go. And this driver board, the reason I did not attach it, I'm going to extend this and probably put it out the back of the unit because I want to get to the power button if I needed to or change some settings like contrast and brightness. So once you put this in here, um, I'm probably have to make it a little bit brighter, um, but I want to make sure I can access it. You can see the power cords coming straight down. This is not a problem. Same with the VGA cable. Okay, so you see here, this is the original interface board from the control panel my friend had given me. It was a Pac-Man uh, unit that he wasn't needing anymore because he modified it anyway. And I originally was going to leave this in here and connect my USB encoder in parallel. That's why I had a machine that I can, a control panel I can use in both units for testing purposes. But I just decided to take it out for now. I may put it back in there later. But um, I have to, I really want to tone this out so I know which pins go to which ones over here. So it, taking it out is just as fine for what I needed to do today. Okay, here you can see the Pac-Man board now with a simple, very inexpensive, this is like $4 for one and like $9 for two, USB encoder. And uh, basically you have the joystick going to the encoder, the two buttons going to the encoder for fire buttons. But you can see here I actually repurposed the power on and off button and the volume control. The volume on and off button now when you throw the switch will act like an escape key to escape out of the game. And when this is in the center position, it's off. When you go to the left position, it's going to add a coin. And you go to the right position, it starts the game. So I basically repurposed all the controls in here. Now you can see here, I just put it all back together. And now it's time to test it out. Let's just try it out and see how it goes. So I'm going to press a coin. And you see we got the coin credit. I'll go back to center. Game starts. So let's see how it plays. Again, this is all original arcade one-up controls here. It's not the real screen, but this four-way directional uh, locked uh, Pac-Man joystick works very well for Donkey Kong as well. It would really be nice if Arcade One Up was able to get the license to do Donkey Kong, because I think it would sell extremely well. Now, this one's also not running a Raspberry Pi. This is actually running uh, a 64 bit Windows version of MAME. You can see the joystick works very well in Pac-Man and in Donkey Kong. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to move my on and off switch, which will basically act as an escape. So I'm going to switch it over, and you can see it takes me back to our main menu here. Now I'm going to pick a different game right now. Now I don't, I don't have the joystick set up here in this interface, so i got to go down to the computer. But we'll pick a different game, and we'll try out. Okay, let's see what next game we're going to try here. Oh, we'll have Frogger. So same thing, we'll put our coin in. 
and start the game. Another game that's really well designed for a four-way direction lock joystick. Now when you're done with the game, same thing. We can escape out of the game and let's see what other games we can try. Okay, let's see what we're gonna load up next. Good old Miss Pac-Man, coin, and start. And of course, obviously this joystick is perfect for this game as well. Now what I always try and do is reuse older parts. I try not to order new things if I can avoid it, which is why I repurposed an older uh, VJ monitor. 17 inch, same size that there would have been in the machine to begin with. And I see how the joystick works really well. But let's try another game. Out. Okay, let's see what other game we're going to try here. A little bit of Berserk. Coin. Start. Oh, and I set up a fire button. Here we go. Woo. Now this one could really use an eight-way joystick, but we get the principle of how it's going to work. Because I want to go in angles and I can't. And Evil Auto is here. And I can't run diagonals. How oh, but I got out. Woo! Just made it. Okay, let's try another game. Okay, let's see what we have going on here. Galaga 88. Let's put a coin in. And start it. Uh, I'm going to start with a duel because that's how I roll. already. Oh, I should have got that. <laughs> All right, let's see what other games we can try here. Little gore faction. Coin. Uh, I haven't played golf in a long time. Let's try something else. Space Fury. Let's give this a try. For my amusement. Prepare for battle. 
Not with the missing some sound samples. Oh well. So, you defeated my Alright, for our final game, we'll play a little Donkey Kong Jr. Coin, start. Try that again. Ha <laughs> ah! ha! Well, at least I didn't die. Okay, so that's it. So again, this machine right here is not anywhere near being done. It was just a quick test with the monitor and the controls. Uh, this guy is going to be something special. Um, I'm not going to tell you exactly what it's going to be yet, but it will be in the future. So thank you for watching, everyone. And remember, now and forever, game on. arcade fan page remember don't admire people too much they'll disappoint you
Sit, Blue Blue, sit. Good dog. <laughs>